Welcome to the Project Finance Modeling for Renewable Energy course. In this lesson, we will review the wind and solar project's energy generation. First, when we are talking about the power, we have to know the difference between power and energy concepts. Power is the rate at which energy is generated and it is measured in watts. Similarly, power capacity is a potential rate at which a wind turbine or solar panel can generate energy. Our home appliances consume energy in the magnitude of watts and kilowatts. One kilowatt is 1,000 watts. Large industrial factories consume energy in the magnitude of megawatts, and one megawatt is one million watts. And energy production on a country level is typically measured in gigawatts, which is one billion watts. Energy is a volume of electricity to be produced by wind turbine or solar panel in a certain period. Note that energy can also take other forms, and electricity is just one of the forms of energy. We measure electricity generation in kilowatt hours, megawatt hours, or gigawatt hours. Let's review an example of an energy production calculation. Suppose that we are looking at a wind turbine with a maximum power capacity of one megawatt. The operation days are 365 days, and operation hours in each day are 24 hours. So. What is the turbine's maximum potential energy output per year? We have to multiply the power capacity by the number of total hours the wind turbine will operate in a year. In this case, the power capacity is 1 megawatt, and the number of hours is 8,760, which is 365 times 24. Multiplying power capacity by the number of hours, we will get the maximum potential energy generation of 8,760 megawatt hours. Now, let's take a look at another example, but this time, let's assume that due to low speed and maintenance, the wind turbine was in operation only 2,500 hours in a year. The question is, what was the turbine's energy output? Again, the wind turbine's power capacity is one megawatt. The number of hours the wind turbine operated is 2,500 because of low wind speed and maintenance. Multiplying the power capacity by the hours the turbine operated, we will get the actual energy output of 2,500 megawatt hours. There is one important ratio in the power sector, which is called net capacity factor. Net capacity factor is the ratio of actual energy generated in a year to maximum potential energy generation in one year. Based on the numbers from the previous example, the net capacity factor would be 28.5%. And by the way, the maximum potential energy that a wind turbine or solar panel can generate is referred to as rated capacity or nameplate capacity. If we know the net capacity factor for a wind turbine or solar panel and its rated capacity, we can forecast its energy output. Let's reverse our last example, but this time, let's suppose we know its net capacity factor, which is 28.5%. To forecast its annual energy production, we would first take the turbine's rated capacity of 1 megawatt and multiply it by the number of hours in a year and its net capacity factor, which would give us annual energy production of 2,500 megawatt hours. Well, we can further ask ourselves, what does determine the net capacity factor for a wind turbine or solar panel that does not have an operations history? The forecasted energy output for the wind turbine or solar panel comes from gross energy yield which depends on the wind or solar resources at the installation site. It is forecasted energy output of the wind turbine or solar panel before taking into account the energy losses due to, for example, downtime caused by maintenance. We will look into resource assessment and determination of gross energy yield in the next lesson. Net energy yield is gross energy yield times forecasted energy generation losses. And the net capacity factor is the ratio of net energy yield to maximum potential energy generation in one year. We mentioned about the energy generation losses due to equipment downtime caused by maintenance. This is called turbine availability. In other words, the turbine is not available during the maintenance, and therefore, energy generation loss occurs. There are other losses, such as losses due to electrical efficiency, light-induced degradation, wake effect, and inverter losses. We have compiled a list of important energy generation losses that are relevant for wind turbines and solar panels. But note that first, this list is not an exhaustive list of energy generation losses. And second, 
Many of the losses are project specific. Typically, consulting engineer will provide turbine or solar panel rated capacity and net capacity factor to be used in financial modeling. And you, as a financial analyst, don't need to concern yourself with gross energy yield and energy generation losses. However, it is always a good idea to have some knowledge about the origins of some of the numbers we use in the financial models.